Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with GY6 Outdoors. Today, we're testing out a little camp stove, super lightweight, cheap, and no pull punches. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So that's what GY6 stands for, is got your six, or to have your back. I wanna make sure to be able to review the products that you see in the industry, tell you if they work, tell you if they're worth it, tell you if the specs are true. That way you can make an informed decision before you spend your hard-earned money on something that you take into the outdoors and have it possibly not work at all. Or it works fantastic and you have a better trip. That's the whole point. So if you enjoy the videos and you like what you're seeing and you want more of them, jump on board, help out. We have a Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash GY6 Outdoors. Our fans donate a little bit of money each month and we do giveaways of gift cards to sports stores or giveaway products we're testing. We might give away this stove to one of our patrons here soon, I'm not sure. So if you're new to the channel, uh, jump on board. These giveaways only last about two to four weeks. So if you're watching this later down the road, it may be over, but we have other stuff going on right away. So back into it. This stove is from Etech City or Etech City. Etech City. Etech City. I'm not sure exactly how they pronounce it. <laughs> I saw this on Amazon. It was a super cheap stove, small, compact. It attaches right to the bottom of isobutane containers that you would have for some and most backpacking stoves. It has an electric starter. It also has an aluminum alloy support system and a stainless steel base system on it, so it should be fairly durable. And after weighing it in, uh, with the hard case it comes with, let's take this out of here real fast, might as well jump right into it. With the hard case, when we weighed it in on our little scale here, with the hard case itself came in at 3.8 ounces of overall weight, which is super lightweight. Without the hard case, you're gonna get 3.3 ounces of overall weight, which is very, very minimal. But if you're a super minimalist, you know, it, it, it matters. These people are counting every peanut they put in their trail mix. So <laughs> it's not my style, but it is for some people. So it's good to know. Uh, I'd spare the extra 0.5 ounces and bring a hard case to protect your stove because without a stove, you'll be up that creek without that paddle and having a miserable camping trip. But let's get right into seeing how this thing works. So hard case, it comes with the hard case. The link is in the description of this video as well. If, you, if it does perform and it does what it's supposed to do and you like what you see, you can click on the link and it'll take you over to Amazon and you can check out the product itself plus uh, helps our channel a little bit because we get kickbacks, uh, not from the individual companies, but from Amazon for leading you that direction. And Amazon does have most of the time, most of the time, the best price in the market for a lot of these products if they're on Amazon. So it folds out, as you can see here, this is your uh, overall high and low heat lever or up and down or open and close valve, whatever you wanna call it. There's a lot of people that say, this is what it's called. I'm not that picky. But you fold that down and then right here, you just push the side and this, all these little things just spread out for the support system up top. These legs can either go wide for a larger pot or then go in for a smaller pot or smaller container, whatever you choose. I'm gonna put it a little bit wider because our mug we're using, we have a solid base here, but you can get isobutane uh, extension legs that go on the bottom. Um, the one I like to use is a universal one from MSR. Uh, it allows you to attach it to any, pretty much any size isobutane container and it gives you feet on the bottom. So no matter where you're at, this is stable so your stove doesn't topple in the wind, which does suck, especially when you don't have a captured pot on top like you do with the wind burner or with uh, jet boils. So with this, we do have an electric lighter on the side, which is nice. So you can just push this in here. It's like a little barbecue lighter. You can see that spark. That spark ignites the isobutane coming out. Hopefully, we will see. And then you adjust the flame down here and see what happens. We just screw this onto the base here. Just like that. I think I closed it. Oh, whoop, I did not. My bad. <laughs> so now that that's closed, uh, my fault. With one of these stoves, you have to consider maybe bringing an extra isobutane container if you're gonna do a multiple day trip, just in case, uh, because this does not have wind resistance. As in, when you put this cup up here, the wind can blow the burner out. So we were gonna see how that works. Let's shut this scale off. We'll see how that works. Let's see if it first turns on. So let's start this up, get a little gas flowing. Let's go a little lower. So far, not igniting. I'm gonna burn my eyebrows off here in a second. All the way up. Still not igniting. Come on. And this is why we do these reviews. Nothing, I see the spark, it's arcing. Come 
Come on. Try to put it right over one of the holes. Nope. I hate electric starters for the most part. Jet Bull does pretty good with theirs, but we be really low. Oh yeah, the isobutane is coming out. But the electric igniter, not working. That sucks. Come on, meow. I mean, if you didn't know that from a review before you bought this, you'd be up in the middle of nowhere without that paddle up that particular creek. That sucks. So luckily, we bring fire no matter where we go. It's not the end of the world. Um, to be honest, I use matches and fire to start my stove currently because I don't trust electric uh, crack starters. That sounds crack starter and crackler, you know, like barbecue lighter, like this one. I don't trust it, and for very good reason. That being one of them, that sucks. But either way, I still like the weight of this. They could even save weight, cut the electric igniter out of there, and you'd be good to go, and save probably at least another ounce. I'm guessing maybe half ounce. But luckily, we brought matches. These are windproof, waterproof, stormproof. Uh, these things are pretty badass. You have to watch the video, click right here or links in the description. Uh, some waterproof, you know, weatherproof matches don't always do what they say they're gonna do. These ones do, and you can stick them underneath water, bring them back out and they ignite again. If you wanna see that, check out the video. Let's get this going. Light it. There you go. So, we have a torch. That's good. That's pretty serious direct heat. So this is super, super, super low. Let's keep that going for a second. So it does, it does burn. It does ignite. That is a good thing. Wind comes in. Let's see if we can electric start it now. Nope. Still doesn't ignite. I was hoping if it would be a little warmer, it might actually um, ignite, but it doesn't in the dirt and it still keeps going. Dirt, still keeps going. I'm just gonna let that one burn out. <laughs> so, got the stove going finally. That does suck. I mean, if that electric igniter would work, that would make it a lot easier. You wouldn't have to worry about bringing stormproof matches. That saves you weight right there. There's all sorts of things you could be saving in weight. Or flint. Flint would probably work even better because you have even more sparks going into the burner. Okay, so. If you want a jet, this, this definitely does it. God. Okay, so let's put this cup on there. See how well it balances when we pour water into it. Decent amount of water. Problem I have with stoves like this is, for one, slippy. Uh, these legs aren't anything special. It's gonna fall off fairly easy. So keep that in mind, but let's turn it up. I can already see some bubbles going on. Let's give it a second. See, you feel a lot of the heat, you feel a lot of the heat coming out around the cup, and that's where more expensive stoves that are a little bit heavier, like jet boils, MSR wind burners, those will actually they're actually heavier, but they contain the heat more, so you're getting more proficiency out of it without losing the heat. Plus, it's wind resistance if it's heavy weather, which is huge. This in a heavy, windy situation, it's probably not gonna work because I could blow this out, but soon to be somewhat of a soon to be rolling boil, which is usually takes about a minute and a half. This is just under, I believe. I didn't time it, but you can look at the timeline on the video. Wow. Yeah, it's getting some heat in there. But I think it's not nearly as proficient because you're using a lot of gas. I'm sure this is letting a lot of gas out of this little isobutane container. That is extremely fast compared to what I thought it would be. We're getting some serious direct heat on there and it's going right into the water. Though we do not have a lot of wind, which is half the battle. And I'm not sure how proficiently it's gonna use the isobutane, how long this will last compared to what I get from, say, my wind burner or a jet boil or other stoves, but the heat is not contained and protected from the wind, but you are gaining the fact that it's super lightweight. So it's a give and a take, you gotta consider that. So I'm not saying this is a complete loss. I think this, for the price that you can buy this for on Amazon, link is in the description. 
I think it's totally worth it, especially for a day trip and in a situation where you can block out the wind. But if you're not sure if it's gonna be extremely high winds all the time, I'm not sure how well this will do. The reason for it is, let's go super high, see if it gets blown out. Yeah, you're gonna be fighting this coming on and off, on and off, and you have to completely keep an eye on it. Uh, whereas other contained situations that have a blocked, locked in uh, boiling pot, um, that's one of the reasons why I like the wind burner. I know I keep saying it, but it's something I've used for years and it's never let me down even in extreme conditions. Having that enclosed system is nice. Uh, you don't have to worry about the wind blowing out the fire. It is very proficient because it keeps the heat directly underneath the pot. It doesn't go outside. You can put your hands around them and you don't feel anything. With this one, I can feel the heat all the way out to about here. So keep that in mind. E-Tech City Mini Camp Stove. I like it. One thumbs up, one thumbs down. Uh, electric igniter not working. Not good, that's a big part of this. I was hoping I wouldn't have to worry about matches, but I always bring them anyway, so what does it matter? This is Andrew with GY6 Outdoors. Thanks for watching. Once again, check out our other playlists. Leave a comment in the video, let me know what you think. Let me know if other stoves you may know of that you wanna see reviewed, uh, we'll review them. All right, it's getting dark. Time to start a campfire and have some fun. See you guys soon.